Before we start, I want to give a quick promo to our Instagram accounts. Yes, I said accounts because we now have two. Firstly, we have the TLDR News Instagram account where we give you extra content you won't get on YouTube. Secondly, we have the Team TLDR Instagram account where we let you see some behind the scenes of what we're working on, as well as updates on trips we go on. At the time of release, we're currently in Estonia discovering more about that e-residency scheme. So make sure to give that account a follow so you can see everything as it happens. There's always a lot of news and drama surrounding Brexit. There's certainly no shortage of votes, speculation and changes. But you might have got the feeling that we're currently at some sort of Brexit standstill. Theresa May's deal isn't getting through Parliament, the EU isn't offering any concessions, MPs aren't changing their minds, and the clock is ticking down with only five weeks to go until the day of Brexit. So why is this? Well in this video we're going to try and explain, using some very basic game theory, why everything is at a standstill, and where it might go from here. So let's start with some very basic game theory, the prisoner's dilemma. If you already know exactly what this is, just skip ahead to the time on screen now. If you don't know what it is, or you really like the sound of my voice, what? I didn't write this script. Uh, then keep watching. The Prisoner's Dilemma is a classic game theory scenario. Basically, you've got two prisoners in two separate cells. Let's call them Prisoner A and Prisoner B. If both stay silent, they can serve a one-year sentence, because the police haven't got much evidence on them. However, if one rats on the other, the snitch walks free, and the other serves ten years. However, if they both rat on each other, they each serve eight years. There are four possible things that can happen. Prisoner A can stay silent, or he can choose to pass the blame. Prisoner B has the same two options. So what should they do? Well, if you consider what's better for both of the prisoners, the best option is for both of them to stay quiet. In this scenario, both prisoners get out after one year. However, remember that the two of them can't discuss this, and they can't coordinate the fact that they're not going to snitch. Imagine you're Prisoner A, you have no control over what Prisoner B does. If you stay quiet, you're either going to spend one year in jail, or ten years, depending on whether or not B snitches. If you snitch, you're either going to walk free, or spend eight years in jail. So what do you do? It seems from your perspective that it would make more sense to snitch. After all, eight years or no years looks better than ten years or one year, so you snitch. However, Prisoner B also goes through the same reasoning, and also snitches, and therefore you both end up in jail for 8 years. Neither side ends up with the optimal result, but due to the asymmetric information they both have, they both take the logical step and snitch to the police. Anyway, why do they waste your time talking about some pseudo-mathematical logic problem? Well the answer is not just because I did A-level economics, and I wanted to show off my knowledge to my old teacher Mrs Piggott. After all, you came here for politics, and countries wearing shoes. Well the reason is because there's a sort of similar dynamic in Parliament at the moment. Instead of prisoners A and B, you've got pro-Brexit and Remain-leaning MPs. Before I explain what I mean, I should just say that this is a pretty simplified analysis. Obviously MPs can't be split into pro and anti groups, and each of these groups have sub-factions and crossover. But we're already pretty intellectually stretched doing a video which combines game theory with the party politics that surrounds Brexit, so simplifying the two sides makes this a whole lot easier. Currently, neither the Brexiteers nor the Remain-leaning MPs are backing May's deal, hence her massive defeat in Commons a month or so back. Both of them are putting up a fuss, and you can sort of see why. Imagine you're the Remain-leaning MPs. If you back May's deal, the most likely outcomes are either that it goes through as is, or may make some Brexiteer concession, like a unilateral exit mechanism, or a codicil on the backstop to clinch some Brexiteer votes, and then it goes through. If you don't back her deal, she's far more likely to be forcing some Remainer concessions to get the deal through, like a customs union. Sure, that means that there's a chance we might get the 29th of March without a deal, and that might result in a no-deal Brexit. But it could also mean a second referendum, or at least a general election. So then what should you do? Well, if you back her deal, you either get the deal as it stands, or you get the deal with some kind of Brexiteer concession, neither of which you really want. If you don't back her deal, you might get a Remainer version of her deal, maybe with a customs union. Or we might get to the 29th of March without a deal, in which case there's a risk of a no-deal Brexit, which you don't want, but you might also get a general election or a second referendum, which ultimately is probably your ideal option. So it seems to make sense that you'd avoid backing her deal. 
The problem is, Brexiteers, and basically every other faction in Parliament for that matter, are also thinking the same way. They don't want to back her deal in the hope that she'll make a concession that they want. If you choose to back her deal, you either get the deal if everyone else backs it too, which isn't great, or you get her deal plus some concession if she bows to pressure from the other group. If no one supports her deal, it will inevitably fail, and there won't be a deal at all. Brexiteers aren't too worried about rejecting her deal and risking getting to the 29th of March without a deal. While they don't want a second referendum, or even a general election, which could delay Brexit, they might get a no-deal Brexit out of this scenario, which they like quite a lot. Hopefully you can see that this is quite similar to the prisoner's dilemma we discussed earlier. If everyone agreed to May's deal, we'd end up with something that nobody really likes, but is ultimately palatable to most MPs. But no one wants to run the risk of the other side being the ones to get the concession, so no one wants to back her deal. You might be thinking that even if it gets the 11th hour, it's 9pm on the 29th of March and May's deal still hasn't gone through, with just a couple of hours until no deal Brexit happens. Surely Parliament will intervene and stop a no deal, given that the majority of MPs don't want a no deal Brexit. While it's true that the majority of MPs don't want a no deal, we just end up in a different game theory scenario here. I know, more boring game theory, but give me a second just to explain why. According to a poll by the Economic and Social Research Council done in January, 57% of Conservative Party members back a no deal, and 76% prefer a no deal to remaining in the EU. A YouGov poll conducted a couple of days later found that 37% of the general public want a no deal Brexit. If you're a Conservative MP or Minister, or even a Labour MP in a Leave voting constituency, voting against a no deal could be the end of your political career. So the ideal case will be one where everyone else votes against the no deal so that you don't need to. This means that no deal will get rejected and you'd avoid the chaos that most MPs believe a no deal would cause. But you can still turn around and tell your Conservative voters that you're a true Brexiteer and hope that you get re-elected next time round. So imagine it's the 28th of March. There's no deal in place. Parliament is voting on extending Article 50. You're a Conservative member in a Leave voting constituency but you agree with the experts that a no-deal Brexit would likely be a disaster, at least in the short term. Let's call you MPA. You know that Parliament needs one more vote to get a majority to extend Article 50. You look over at MPB, who's in the exact same situation as you. Hopefully you can see where we're going with this. Let's look at your options. So if you're MPA or B, you're going to be very tempted to vote for a no-deal, in the hopes that everyone else votes against it and you get to tell your Conservative membership that you're still a true Brexiteer. Also, if you vote against the No Deal and it doesn't happen, you're probably not going to be able to take any credit for it. You might be able to claim that you saved the UK from chaos, but seeing as the counterfactual never actually happens, no one's going to actually know the chaos you saved them from. In fact, Conservative members are probably going to romanticise it more once it hasn't happened. So in this scenario, if either MP rejects the No Deal, it doesn't happen. If both reject it, no deal doesn't happen, but they both upset their constituents, risking their careers. One of them accepts it, no deal still doesn't happen, but just one of them has to risk their career. If both of them accept no deal, then no deal would happen. Neither of their careers is at risk. Both MPs could still claim to be hardcore Brexiteers, but a no deal Brexit would happen, something most MPs don't think is a good idea for the country. Both MPs think the best outcome is for the other person to reject no deal. Neither of them want to put their neck on the line to defeat No Deal. Basically, no more Conservative MPs than is strictly necessary will want to vote against the No Deal. And given that how bad MPs tend to be with their maths, miscalculation is very possible. Hopefully we've proved to you using economics, prisoners and Parliament that maybe we should be a bit more worried about a No Deal than we already are. As if we needed anything more to worry about. If you hate how negative we've been about a no-deal Brexit in this video, maybe you want to check out our video which discusses some of the upsides of a no-deal. You can find that by clicking the card in the corner of the screen, or by going to the link in our description. Also, if you want to find out how no-deal will affect you in the short term, we have a video about that. And no matter whether you're from the UK or the EU, we have videos discussing how no-deal could impact you. It's almost as if we're trying to cash in on no-deal Brexit videos while we can. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel. While you're at it, click the bell icon so you never miss another video. Also for more exclusive content, search for TLDR News on your favourite social network 
to find more content and get updated when our videos go live. Also, as I mentioned up front, we have a new Instagram account called Team TLDR, where we're posting behind the scenes photos and videos, such as documenting our recent trip to VidCon and our current trip to Estonia. All of those exclusive photos, videos, stories and live streams can be found only on at Team TLDR.